What's going on, maniacs? You know what time it is. Madman time! That's right! And Madman's looking like a Chia pet. There's a new pet. Ch -ch -ch Chia! I know. You know what time it is. So I am here to do another review and slash tutorial about a very personal favorite product of mine, Wild Root. Now I ordered the Wild Root along with the Suavecito and I wanted to keep this one a surprise, but uh, here it is now. And I've always enjoyed using Wild Root. I go back to high school years with the Wild Root, which is, you know, 15 something years ago. I really enjoyed using it then. I remember my dad was the one who, hold on a second, mm, fucking hair. Um, it was my dad who was the one that actually turned me on to Wild Root and to check it out. Um, for those that don't live here in the States, you're probably not going to understand what I'm talking about, but one of our local, we're well, not really local, but chains countrywide for pharmacies is called Walgreens, and I always shop there, especially when I was in high school. I still do. And, <clears throat> you know, Walgreens at the time, at least the ones out in California, always had lots of hair products on the shelf. And I remember uh, trying the Brill Cream, and I liked it, you know, but again, it wasn't good for any of the big pumps or anything like that. It was good for more of your classic, old-school greaser hairstyles, not the really overly developed pumps that we have today. But uh, I remember we were shopping one day, and my dad says, hey, you might want to check out some Wild Root, and it was on the shelf. He's like, this was a product that was used in the 50s a lot as well. So I was like, well, shit. And I noticed it was like two bucks cheaper. I mean, bro cream is always like seven, eight dollars, even back then, no matter where you go. You're always going to find it around, you know, in that range. And the Wild Root was like five forty nine dollars or something like that. So it was way cheaper. It's a couple bucks cheaper. Hell, I could afford that. You know, shit, I always had to watch my pennies, nickels, and dimes as closely as I can. You know, I still have to. I still have to. The one thing that Wild Root that I really, really liked was, I liked it better than Bro Cream because it just, I think it had a shinier effect and it had a better, it, it held better. I always found that Wild Root held my hair in place better. And see, here's the thing about Wild Root. Just like Bro Cream, this is not a pomade. This is grease, okay? This is going to work with the natural curves and waves of your hair. So if you have really super curly hair, I would not recommend this stuff because it isn't going to do shit for you. But if you have, you know, naturally thick wavy hair or even straight hair, it works great with straight hair, you know, it keeps it all in line, but, you know, I don't really have straight hair, so it, it, it goes and it curves with my hair, which is more of the classic greaser look anyway. Now, I got this little four ounce bottle off of Amazon for like seven bucks or something like that. Prices have gone up. Back in the day when I used to get the Wild Root, the bottle was like twice the size of this. It was a lot bigger. It was like five bucks in stores, but unfortunately the Walgreens around my area doesn't carry this on the shelf. Go figure. They got the Brill Cream, they don't got the Wild Root. But I definitely enjoy using this product. I'm going to show you guys right now how I use it and why. So let's get into that. Okay, as you maniacs know, I like to, of course, stack. And if you don't know what stacking means, it means using multiple products. Now I'm going to use some of the Murray Superior. Uh, the reason I'm using the Murray Superior, especially for the sides, because I'm still growing them in a bit, and this really helps to slick them down and keep them in place. So I'm going to go ahead and start applying it to the sides. And I'm going to apply a little bit, just a little bit, into the top of the hair. But the sides and back are going to get the Murray's treatment. Because the Wild Root ain't going to hold it down. I'm going to use my Wild Root as more of a finishing product. Because here's the thing also to remember. Whenever you mix a pomade, a wax-based pomade, and a grease product, the grease will break the wax down to a certain degree. So a Murray Superior would end up being like, you know, it's a heavier hold. But by the time the Wild Root takes effect with it, it's definitely going to be more of like a medium. Which is fine, because I want it to go ahead and, and adapt and swerve to the curves of the hair and the motion of the ocean and all that shit. You dig? I'm going to go ahead and shake this up. One thing I want to note with the Wild Root. It is not the same as it used to be. <clears throat> and what I mean by that 
It still has the same smell. It still has its milky texture, but I've noticed that it there's like a paste-like substance that's below the surface of the milk. The mil it looks like milk, okay? Straight up, it looks like thick milk, like powdered milk or something like that when you don't put enough water. It kind of has that consistency to it. But I'm going to go ahead and drip a little bit, and you'll see what I'm talking about. You see how there's like milk, and then there's a paste. Back when I first started using Wild Root, it didn't have the paste. So I do think that they've changed the formula somewhat. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, because it works just as well. But I do notice that there is a difference in the product, and it is not exactly the same as it used to be. Now with Wild Root, you don't need a lot, okay? You really do not need a lot. Because if you put too much, it's going to completely break all of the wax down, and you don't want that either, because you want it to have some hold. And I'm going to go ahead and take my pick, and I'm just going to go ahead and slick it over to the back a little bit. Slick it side over, like so. And again, this stuff works really, really good for doing more of the classic looks. Ah, hell, why not get into some classic looks real quick? Let's go ahead and do a side parted pomp. You know, because side parted pomps. All right. Let's see here. What can we use? Ooh, how about we use the Lox Woodcomb? I hardly ever use that. It's always so nice. I don't want to mess it up, but I think this is all right. This will work fine. So the first thing you're going to want to do is find or figure out where you want to put that part. I'm just going to kind of go quickly. I'm not going to make an all-day affair of trying to get the part perfect. Ooh, I actually kind of like this. This works really good for, for doing a side part. Ooh, I like this. Not bad. Not bad at all. <laughs> Alright, so we got the side part going on. I figure, why the hell not play a little bit with the, uh, with the product while it's fresh in the hair, before my hair really sets and starts taking shape. I have a little fun with it. So then we pull it to the side. I'm going to go ahead and use my roller brush to really glue everything down and help cement it into place like so oh I like that not too shabby at all and now we've got the classic comb over parted pomp kinda like that Vito Scaletta look for any of those that played Mafia 2 this is pretty much what Vito had had the parted pompadour you know, I'm liking the shit out of this. You know, I think I'm just going to stop and, and just leave it like this. I was thinking about doing some other hairstyles, but I'm liking this so much right now, I, I got to leave it, you know. I'm digging the shit out of this. Back in the day, your Brill Cream and your Wild Root would have been used most commonly by greasers. Now, the pomade thing didn't really start to take effect until you started getting into, you know, some of the uh, the cats like Elvis and... Johnny Cash and the ones that kind of had more of the exaggerated pompadours back in the 50s. Most greasers, even though they started to copy <clears throat> the hairstyles a little bit more, they always kind of had more of a just a greasy, they put the Brill Cream or the Wild Root in and always had more of that longer hair greasy look. And their pomps, even when they did them, they weren't exaggerated, they weren't over the top like you see. Well, today, you know, you got the big towers and the big rollout ones, and, you know, that's more of a new school today thing. But the original greasers didn't really have hair that looked like that. But Wild Root and Brill Cream would have definitely been two of your most used uh, greases. And then when it comes to, like, a pomade or some kind of a wax petroleum-based product, you would have saw a lot of, like, petroleum jelly used as well. But the cool thing about Wild Root is it gives a very nice shine. Look at that shine. Look at that. Look at that shine. I dig the shit out of this. I'm really digging the side pump thing. I think I'm going to keep it like that. See, I got them little fucking baby, not baby hairs, but little hairs that want to come up out of place. Be a pain in the ass. And a quick way to deal with that 
Take a little bit of the suavecito. Do 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 do. Kind of helps to stick them down, glue them down, keep it all in place. But anyway, if you want to try a bottle of the Wild Root, you want to go on the wild side and get more of that classic old school greaser look. Well, I'm going to go ahead and have a link in the description below where you can go click on it and order some for yourself if they don't have it at a local store near you. You dig? In my previous update video, I mentioned that uh, I started a Patreon, so if you would like to support the Madman and become a patron, consider uh, subscribing to that. I have three different tiers, and like I've described in the previous video what the tiers are, there are some rewards, they're not anything major yet, but I'm building up to it, and they will be subject to change, and there will be more as I'm able to do more. But if you dig the shit out of these videos, and these have been helpful to you, and you would like to support the Mad Men and to help this channel grow and become bigger than ever and really push the greaser rockabilly scene out there and get more exposure to it, go ahead and subscribe to my Patreon and help me to help you. Dig? Also mentioned in my update video, yes, I did start a Twitch. I would like to start live streaming. I'm thinking about doing, uh, you know, covering this again. Um, thinking about doing some art tutorials and hangouts with the Madman, maybe play the odd game or two, have a good time, just kind of make the Twitch a fun experience where you guys can come and chill, maybe learn a few things about art, get some ideas, and uh, put on a good show for you kid, cats and kittens. So if you're excited about that, go follow the Patreon, go follow the Twitch. I'm trying to broaden the horizon, I'm trying to expand, I'm trying to not just make it all about YouTube, I'm trying to get some other things out there going and really establish cryptic art and the madman and the madman's maniacs all right so enough of all that shit i got things to do i got to get this damn thing edited so if you don't know get a clue get a brew get a rock and roll tattoo hang loose be safe and like subscribe share favorite go follow the patreon follow the twitch follow my uh, social media, my Facebook fan page, the Instagram, the whole thing. All the links are in the description below, so go give them a click. Keep up to date with the madman of what's going on. Alright. That was a mouthful and a fucking half. See y'all later. So, did you dig this video and find it helpful? If so, give it a like, subscribe, favorite, share. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitch, and consider subscribing to my Patreon for more rocking content.